Hello and welcome to Castles and Legends. Today we are off to Blenheim Palace, the magnificent and wildly extravagant country house located in Woodstock, Oxfordshire. It is the only non-royal and non-episcopal, meaning the residence of a bishop, palace in England. It is one of the largest houses in England and is designed in the short-lived distinct Baroque style. The palace was a gift from Queen Anne to John Churchill, first Duke of Marlborough, to celebrate his military triumphs in the War of the Spanish Succession, which culminated in the Battle of Blenheim in 1704. John Churchill was born in 1650 to a minor gentry family. In 1678, Churchill married Sarah Jennings, an attendant upon Princess Anne. Churchill's military career flourished, and during the War of the Spanish Succession, he proved himself to be a very capable commander, winning a series of victories for the British. For his victory at Blenheim, Churchill was rewarded with the gift of land at Woodstock and substantial funds to build a country house. Churchill's wife, Sarah, was known to be a difficult woman, although utterly charming when she chose to be. Sarah was an attendant upon Princess Anne and became her close friend. When Princess Anne became Queen Anne, Sarah was chosen to be Her Majesty's Mistress of the Robes, a position where she yielded great influence over the Queen on both personal and political affairs. The land that Blenheim Palace was to be built on contained the historic ruins of the Manor of Woodstock. The manor had been the site where Queen Elizabeth I had been imprisoned from 1554 to 1555. It was later bombarded and ruined by Oliver Cromwell's troops during the Civil War. Sarah, the first Duchess of Marlborough, insisted the ruins were completely removed. This was opposed by the palace's architect, but eventually the Duchess had her way and the ruins were cleared. The architect commissioned by the Duke to design Blenheim Palace was Sir John Bamborough, which was a curious appointment as he had limited architectural experience. This choice did not go down well with the Duchess, who favoured Sir Christopher Wren, most famous for St Paul's Cathedral. Funding the construction of the palace faced many troubles. The Duke is thought to have contributed £60,000 and the colossal 240,000 was received from the Crown. The relationship between Queen Anne and the Duchess became strained and after frequent altercations, Queen Anne ceased further payments for the palace in 1712. The Marlboroughs were forced into exile until after Queen Anne's death in 1714. Upon their return, the Duke and Duchess soon regained favour at the court and the Duke decided to take on Blenheim Palace's completion at his own expense. The Duke's wallet was much smaller than the Crown's and he had to employ new craftsmen that would accept a lower wage. In 1717, the Duke suffered a massive stroke and the Duchess took control of a building project. Costs had spiralled and the Duchess accused Vamber of extravagance. The Duchess desired a palace that was a fitting tribute to her husband, but also a comfortable family home, which was not an easy task to achieve. Tensions and arguments between the Duchess and Vamber escalated, and after one particularly heated altercation, Vamber stormed out of the site in a rage insisting that the new craftsmen were inferior to the ones that he had employed. Vanborough was banned from the site from this point onwards, and even his wife was refused entry as a member of a viewing public upon Blenheim's completion. Vanborough's reputation was now gravely damaged, 
and he received no further great public commissions. His final design was Seton de Laval in Northumberland and is considered to be his finest work, but he sadly died shortly before its completion. Following Vanbrugh's exit, his assistant architect, Hawksmoor, completed the work. In 1722, the Duke died, but the Duchess was determined to complete Blenheim Palace as a tribute to her late husband. The exact date that Blenheim Palace was completed is unknown now. Blenheim Palace was passed down the family line when the fifth Duke of Marlborough, George Spencer Churchill, inherited the palace in 1817, his irresponsible spending depleted the remaining family fortunes and he was forced to sell off other family estates. Blenheim was safe though, as it was entailed, which forbid its sale. When the seventh Duke inherited Blenheim Palace, the family's fortunes were still in a dire state and in 1880, he was forced to petition Parliament to break the protective entail and the Great Sunderland Library was sold off for vast sums of money, but it was not enough. One rather memorable person to have been born at Blenheim Palace is none other than Sir Winston Churchill on the 30th of November 1874. Churchill also proposed to his future wife Clementine at Blenheim. He had planned a romantic walk to the Rose Garden, but a sudden torrent of rain disrupted his plans. He quickly improvised though and took Clementine to shelter in the Temple of Diana and proposed there. When the ninth Duke of Marlborough, Charles, inherited Blenheim in 1892, the estate was nearly bankrupt. Charles took a very different approach to solving the family's financial crisis. He married into money. In 1886, he married the American railroad heiress, Consuelo Vanderbilt. Her parents were desperate to see their daughter become a duchess, a privilege that her father paid $2.5 million for, that's approximately $81.4 million today, with an added annual income of $100,000 each for life. The marriage was not a happy one and certainly did not get off to a good start. Upon completing their vows and leaving the church, Charles told Consuelo that he loved another woman and would never return to America. During their honeymoon, George got to work replenishing the depleted palace with tapestries, paintings and furniture he found in Europe and upon his return to the palace, he immediately set out on an extensive renovation of the palace and gardens. In 1906, the unhappy Consuelo shocked society when she left her husband. They divorced in 1921 and she remarried the same year. This time a happy marriage ensued and she later wrote a candid biography, The Glitter and the Gold, recalling her time at Blenheim with Charles as the Glitter and her second marriage as the gold. Today Blenheim Palace still remains in the hands of the Dukes of Marlborough and is a frequent location for filming. In fact it has made 71 appearances in television and film more than any other English country house. The palace and the extensive gardens are also open for the public to visit for an entrance fee. Thanks for watching today. Please do like our video and subscribe to our channel and we hope to see you again soon.